We are looking at TTG High Slide Gallery Pro. In previous videos, we've gone over the controls located here in the site info pane. We're going to close that up though, and now move into the color palette control pane. The first set of options we have here are for grid appearance, and these are going to apply to the thumbnail grid. Our first slider is for round frame corners, and I'll make a fairly significant change just so you can see what's happening on the video. Um, now just like with the gallery description, the round corners are only going to be visible in browsers that support CSS3. So you're going to see them in Safari, Firefox, Chrome, Opera, but not in Internet Explorer. Uh, generally I like to keep the corners rounded but subtle. So between 5 and 10 pixels I think works very nicely. Um, the next couple of sliders are going to change the size of the surrounding elements for the thumbnail grid. Uh, so we've got the frame border, which is the outermost line. We have the frame size, which is that gray area uh, just inside that border. So if I take that down to zero, you can see that it gets very tight around the thumbnail image. And uh, if you increase that, you can make the overall width of each thumbnail element wider. The matte border is the third line in, which you can see there, expanding. And then we have the matte size, which is the strip that goes around the thumbnail closest in. Now for now I'm going to leave those very large so you can see the colors changing as we work with these color pickers. So the frame border is going to change that outermost color. We then have the frame, which lets you change that. The matte border changes that third line going in. And then we have the matting, which is the area closest to the image. So I'm now going to set these at a more reasonable size. Actually, that one's where I want it, at 20. The matte border I'm going to bring down to 2. And the matte size is usually I like to put around 4. All right, the uh, next set of controls are for the image ID tags. and. Those are these little gray boxes here beneath the thumbnail frames. Uh, if you don't want to use these, you can get rid of them simply by turning off the checkbox. If you want them on, uh, you've got three different colors you can change. Uh, the text, the background, and the border. With the sliders, we can increase or decrease the font size, and we can also apply rounded corners, again, only visible in browsers that support CSS3. Now the border thickness on these is also dependent upon this slider up here that we've used for frame border, so that keeps the look consistent between the frame and the ID tag. Uh, if you want to change the content of the ID tag, we actually need to close the color palette, come down to Image Info, and locate this one, uh, Image ID, which you can then go into the custom settings and change to something else if you'd like. So I could put, for example, uh, we'll say the date. Now, when you make changes in the Image Info pane, oftentimes you're going to have to refresh your preview. You do that on the Mac by pressing Command-R, on Windows, Control R. And when that refreshes, you can see here that the uh, image ID tags have changed. We're no longer looking at the file name. We now have the date of the shoot. Uh, so you can customize the information you put in there using the controls here in the image info pane. Jumping back up to color palette, we next come to the cell numbers, which are the numbers here in the corners. Uh, they don't have to be in the corner you can align them to the right or to the center. Uh, you can also turn those numbers off altogether if you don't want to use them. Of course you can change the uh, 
color of the font being used. And you can also change the size of the number. Now the actual font is being controlled by the page master font families, uh, which we saw way up at the top of the site info pane. So I'm going to turn the cell numbers off for the rest of this example. Moving down to the next group, we have high slide options. Uh, and this is where things start to get really interesting. Uh, the first is an input field for the high slide commercial unlimited license. There are different types of licenses that you can purchase for using high slide. If you have the single domain license, then you can ignore this field and leave it empty. But if you buy the commercial unlimited license that allows you to use high slide on an unlimited number of domains and websites, um, you would have received a license number, and that should go in here. So we're going to leave that blank for now. We have the high slide mode, and this is actually a very, very important setting because it's going to help to define the way that high slide behaves for the rest of the, the work we're going to be doing in TTG High Slide Gallery. And we're going to address each of these modes individually in the following videos. So for now, I'm going to sign off, and uh, in the next set of videos, we'll start getting into the various high slide modes.